Hello everyone, this is Rick with Transformation Michigan. And I'd like to talk to you today and uh, we're going to be getting what we call the Truth Serum Series. This particular one is called Offense. A time of opportunity or a time to move into bondage. Offenses in the body of Christ are running rampant. As I travel across the state, I see there's offenses and between husband and wives and wives and husbands. We have offenses between brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, uh, children and parents, parents and children. It happens in many forms, in many ways. You could have offenses between people in your church, maybe between church leadership and the congregation, or the congregation and church leadership. We know Jesus said in Matthew 12, 25, that a house divided cannot stand. We know it says in once uh, Psalm 133 verse 1 how sweet it is if the brethren to dwell together in unity you know so what I wanted to do today is, is cover uh, the first part of four parts in this series on offenses it's a very serious issue especially what we're facing in the body of Christ today uh, regarding our state our nation internationally we have to bring divine intervention down and God honors unity he, he honors love forgiveness, tender-heartedness. He honors reconciliation, uh, giving grace to others, restoration of people. This is what he honors. So what is an offense? An offense is an attack. It can uh, to assail someone, to make angry, to disturb, uh, to afflict a conscience. It could also be to scandalize someone. It could uh, be a wounding of somebody through words. You know, there's life and death in the words that we speak. And also can be a transgression or violation of moral or divine law. So, you know, offenses take place all the time. Uh, you know, I'm speaking about this because I totally realize that it has to be experiential. I'll tell you, I have offended people. People have offended me. I've acted wrongly in many situations. But I also have taken the higher ground and, and acted right a lot of times. And my wife and I have been offended a number of times. You know, we, we have taken many hits uh, over the times of uh, being in the, in the body of Christ. You know, it's amazing that the body of Christ has many parts, you know, and it has teeth. <laughs> it says in Galatians 5 how uh, we can bite and devour one another. And, you know, so I have to go back and look at all of our life experiences over since I was 30 years old and became a Christian. It's been a process. It's been a journey. And I have to draw back on those times to really look at and evaluate why did things happen the way they do. You know, God allows offenses in our life because in that offense, what he does, he gives you the possibility and opportunity to gain a redemptive authority wherever you have been wounded or offended. It also opens up the possibility of you being able to speak in that person's life who has offended you. I mean, we really have to see why God does these things. You know, God is a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of justice. But, you know, offenses need to be dealt with in the body of Christ. So I like to talk about this and really get into this in this four-part series above the Truth Serum series. I see in our state right now, God is moving wonderfully. But we have to get out of a mentality of hound dogs. I was traveling with a Bishop Larry Jackson recently, and he made a statement to me. He says, you know, the body of Christ has to quit being hound dogs, trying to sniff out every right and wrong in somebody. You know, I totally agree with that. And so, covering this area of offenses, let's, let's talk about the process, okay? You know, when, when offense takes place, there's a process. First of all, the offense happens. And then what we have takes place, there's a resentment that, that develops between two people. And this resentment can be very strong depending on the type of offense that has manifested. A third step then, a barrier rises up. When we look at Proverbs 18, 19, it says an offended party, it's, it's, it's stronger than, a, a, than a, a city that's unyielding. Bars of a castle rise up. And so the relationship between those two people becomes very strained, and they just don't hear each other. I've been part of these situations. I understand that. It's amazing when, when, 
when uh, this barrier rises up because of a fence, how even you can be walking in a mall or walking in a store and you see that person and you try to avoid them. Or you try to go the other way. Uh, this resentment, uh, this barrier begins to occupy your thoughts. Over and over again, you begin working it over in your mind. Then pretty soon, what takes place in the offense? Well, the next step, I would call it reporting. What is reporting? Pretty soon, when you're offended, you begin to try to justify why you're right. And then you begin to go report it to others. And you build this encampment of people around yourself. And you share with them what that person did or how wrong that person is. You begin to build this case in this process. You know, I know, been there and done that. And not walking in, in total perfectionness. But because of the experiences my wife and I have had, we understand now it can see through this. We are actually can come out of the fishbowl, out of the aquarium, and actually see all these things that are manifesting across our state. You know, recently, you know, I know of a church in, uh, uh, in Michigan, in southern Michigan, where there was an offense that took place between the leadership and the congregation. And it's amazing now how you can see the two sides developing. And what they're doing is they're creating barriers because each side is reporting and telling their side of the story. Now, pretty soon when those two sides, you know, they, they come in contact, they talk with each other, Pretty soon now there's this secondary offense that's taken up. And so when the process goes on, and pretty soon this reaction of Galatians 5.15, where people now begin to snip at each other, begin to add to the story, where perceived facts are really not truth. You know, have you ever told the story to somebody? And you know how you tell the story, and pretty soon maybe somebody adds to it. And it can be a lot of times untruth. You know, so this is how offenses build up and secondary offenses take place. And so when that person, you know, who's been offended, they build this team of people around them and they talk about that other person or persons and pretty soon now there's two sides. We're here, Jesus wants unity in the body of Christ. He wants us to take a humble ground and, or a higher ground and humble ourselves and try to get to the bottom of the matter and handle with grace, love, tenderheartedness, forgiveness, reconciliation, and restoration. You know, I think this is what we have to strive for as the body of Christ. Again, why am I bringing this up? I'm just not talking from a, from a book standpoint. I have lived it, been through it. Uh, I know, and I've, I've acted wrong, and I've acted right in these matters. So I'm trying to say here to everybody that this is a real key issue in the body of Christ that we have to deal with. So after the sides develop, when offense has taken place, what takes place now? All these new barriers rise up amongst people. And now you have warring conviction. You have factions that develop. And more is added to the story. It seems like it's never ending. And it causes great division at a time in the church where we need great unity. So again, how do we model this? We model after Jesus Christ and what he has taught us. He says, go after the one sheep. You know, he's left the 99. He went after the one. And I say, this is what we have to do. Even if somebody is in the wrong doctrine, we try to correct them. Maybe they're not going to receive it right away. Well, we still don't write them off and build up a case against them. You know, I see this happening. It, it can happen in a marriage where a husband and wife are having a contention within the home. And maybe the husband goes to his friends, you know, and talks about, boy, I'll tell you, that woman isn't treating me right. And pretty soon they start agreeing, they build up this case. Or the wife can do the same thing to the husband. Maybe between a family member. You know, maybe between a brother and a sister and, and within that family. It happens all the time. And so we have people walking around with these wounds that have been afflicted. Because, again, there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And, you know, Satan, he's called Beelzebub. Lord of the flies. And you know what attracts flies? Open wounds will attract flies and they can infect that wound. Many people in the body of Christ are walking around with wounds that have been affected because the enemy's job is to deceive us and to make us or, 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 or help us move into an area where not only of offense of one another, 
but cause great disunity. Because he knows the commanded blessing of Psalm 133 cannot flow if there's disunity in the body of Christ. Jesus said in John 17, at the end of that chapter, he said, Father, I pray they can be one as we are one, and they can be one in us. Well, again, it begins with love, restoration, forgiveness, reconciliation, giving grace to those people who maybe that had offended you, because God wants the sides to come together. We really need it right now. And you know, I'm talking from you again. I've said it redundantly already in this presentation from experience, you know. You know, if I want somebody to do a heart surgery on me, I'm not going to go to a car mechanic and have them operate, am I? Of course not. I'm going to go to somebody who's experienced it, who is a heart surgeon, and who can get into that heart, who's had a number of operations performed on other people. And so again, in the times that my wife and I have been through and and, and all the different stresses and all the different times of division that we have caused sometimes in the body of Christ. I've learned from that. So this is why I want to share my heart with you and, and get down to really some specifics. Because we have to heal this breach in the body of Christ to be effective for his, to advance his kingdom in this day and age. And who is the real heart surgeon? Jesus Christ. He wants to perform a moral cardiogram on each and every one of us. He wants to show us where we are hiding things. I held an offense years ago, I remember, against an individual, somebody who hurt me. And I remember uh, weeping before the Lord in this situation because, because of this particular message that was given that evening. God opened my heart up and he showed and revealed to me a door that I had closed. He opened it wide open and I got hit with conviction. I got hit with the guilt that says, God, I know this is wrong. I know this is wrong to hold and harbor these feelings against that individual. And I truly began to weep before God. And my wife found me because I went off into the corner of a church. It was a large conference gathering. I found this little corner. And she came and she came up to me and says, could I pray for you? She laid hands on me. And God gave her a picture of my heart of chains around it with blood clots. It was dark. And she prayed that I would be set free by the grace of God from this bitterness, the bondage, this, this accusation I was making against this person mentally with my mouth, thinking it all the time. And when she prayed for me, she said my heart changed. And she saw snow coming down onto my heart. And it was just turned white and the chains broke off. This is what God wants to do in this portion of the Truth Serum Series. Because everybody has caused offenses and has been offended. I like to read this to you. We have a friend that we met at my son and daughter's church that they pastor in Australia. Her name is A.J. Butel. And she writes for Elijah List. And uh, uh, she now has a, a ministry in Thailand and, and rescuing girls out of sexual trafficking. She writes for Jesus Culture. I like to read this to you because I'll tell you what, this was so, this hit me so much when I saw what she had said here. I'd like to close this portion out by reading this. Dear friends, and she posted this on Facebook, be very careful what you listen to and pass forward. A mere whisper can gather excess mass and weight and cause serious destruction. When your information is inaccurate, redundant, or based on conjecture, then you are only drawing others to your own presumption. Truth is swerved, not served. This is not kingdom. Broad stroke criticism and accusation just produces fear, confusion, and division. It results in setback and stalls hope. You and I wield a powerful tongue, sometimes without thought. Heart check. What is the fruit of your words? What unfolds in your way? Death or life? And most importantly, what is your intention? Are you wanting to tear down or build up? Be sure it is the enemy that you are bringing to rubble. Determine as your brothers and sisters you are lifting and strengthening. Sometimes we get this reversed. How tragic. Determine it is your brothers and sisters you are lifting and strengthening. And if your heart is truly to pursue progress and momentum, then consider wisely your method of contribution. Define your end goal and walk and talk with a heart of honor. Love always wins and the lover is always the winner. People, I just want to say to you, encourage you. Let's move on together as we go through this process. May God bless you and I hope 
this mini message on the Truth Serum Syrup series has helped you. God bless you in Jesus' name.